Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Dada's Show coming to you from Best Western Hotel Upper Hill here in Nairobi. I'm your host, Ashiko Mbune. Now, Dada's Show aspires to promote the spirit of sisterhood and solidarity amongst Kenyan women. And we do this by creating an open and a safe platform for women to discuss issues pertaining to their health, their lifestyles, their careers, their families, and anything pertaining to their lives. Now, Kenya has very recently turned 60, and it's a huge milestone for all of us as Kenyan people. That said, only 4.2% of the country's population can say that they have witnessed the growth of this great nation. So as Dada's show, we sought out to get a first-hand account of the growth of this great nation over the past 60 years. What kind of impact and what role have women played in the developing of of this country, be it from politics, be it in industry, and what recommendations can be offered moving forward. Now, today I am joined by a distinguished lady. And what makes her so impressive, what makes her so exemplary is her very impressive curated milestones. Now, she was the first uh, female student, student to, under, to, to attend the Royal Technical College, which is now known as University of Nairobi. We, of course, which she graduated being the first, uh, own of the first holder of a PhD uh, in a field that uh, very few people had actually been able to get. Uh, she will tell us more about that. On top of all that, she proceeded to graduate and become the first black African woman to be appointed as a lecturer. And you would think that that is, that is impressive enough, but no. She went ahead and became the first female uh, member of Parliament for Samia in 1974 and after that she was appointed to sit in the cabinet in the government of Kenya being the first female to ever do that. Now her career has been vast and very transformative which has seen her getting awards and accolades from presidential awards to the most recent one that she got from the Harvard uh, Club of Kenya which is the Lifetime Achievement Award. As always we encourage you at home to take part in this and any other conversation by joining Joining us on our social media pages at KBC Channel One. You can also reach me directly at Ashiko the Host across all social media platforms. So the the matter of factly and my very proud moment to introduce my guest uh, on Dada's show today is the Honourable Professor Julia Ojiambo. I feel like we need to give a round of applause for making it and for being patient. <laughs> And for being patient as everything was being put together. And we just want, because I know, madam, you're a very busy woman, I also want to acknowledge my wonderful audience. So we will just get straight to the point. So um, we did celebrate Kenya at 60, very, very recently. As somebody who was actually there, how, what kind of feelings did, uh, did that uh, rise in you as we were celebrating it? You cast your mind back, where was I? in the first year, yes. to count this sixth, where have I come from? Mm -hmm. For my audience here today, mm -hmm. you need to be like, it's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like yesterday. Yeah. You know, you look at it and you wonder what has happened? Because there's been so much mm -hmm. that has happened in the last 60 years, mm -hmm. you won't know. You know, you are not there, eh? this <laughs> audience. <laughs> Maybe their mothers were not there. Yes. Yeah? yeah. But we were there. Mm. We were growing up. We witnessed it. We were beyond that. Today for you, when we say beyond that, you cast your mind back and you can't see it behind a screen. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's life. Because we participated. There were women there. Mm. There were young people like yourselves. There were very few ladies. There are very few Africans who are in, in, in the city of Nairobi. These tall buildings were not there. All these drink, twinkling lights that you see were not there. So you can imagine what was it there during that time. Oh, most of these parts that you see developed today were forests. We walked through paths to get to Kaloleni, was uh, the biggest city for Africans. Mm -hmm. And Bahati, Dagoretti, what you see in between here was not there. But what is more important that is uh, uh, amazing to us who were there 
is the growth that mm -hmm. has taken place. That today it is ours and we are proud to have it. Those days it was not ours and we longed to have it. We have, there were our elders who were fighting to get it to us. And we were saying, so what is it like when it gets to you? And when it came to us, it was excitement. I can tell you, you hear about it, you hear, you see it on the screen, you see the lights going up. Mm -hmm. But for those who are here, it was happiness, it was tears, it was relation, and you didn't know what to say. Yeah. I want to tell you, uh, ladies, that um, uh, Dada Zango, my grandchildren, that during this, those days, your grandparents who are here had gone through tough mm -hmm. to get there. Those that you saw in the streets at that time were called Mama Uhurus, who had survived from the forests yeah. and came out. Those were the brave ones that walked these streets. For us, for me, it was like, you know, you counted how many black little girls that you could see walking in the streets here, and there were very few. So uh, today I look at the crowd of the ladies, mm -hmm. young ladies you are, you are like yourselves, leadership. And I say, God, you have been great. Yeah. You really have brought us up. These are all our children. These are offsprings. When you look back, it's like a, a hen would look at it as you know, little chicks yeah. and just say, yes, yeah. I'll run to go and get you and scratch, scratch for you to eat. Yeah. That's what's happening. Wow. So it's excitement. Mm. Yeah. There were no schools. For us, there were very few. These schools that you see everywhere now, you go, in, there was nothing like a telephone. You know, it, can you think of when there were no uh, telephones? Yeah. Those little things you had and you put there, there were those things with screws and screws <laughs> and screws. And you put that when, hello! And you screamed <laughs> against the tree to be heard. And to get even to that was difficult. Yeah. To get a letter across, it took you three, four days for a letter to travel to Kisumu and back. Mm -hmm. so, all that development that has taken place is overwhelming. Yeah. And for me, I say thank you. I've mm -hmm. seen it all from our leadership of Mzee Jomo Kenyatta when he came in with the freedom fighters, take over government from the colonial government and start from the scratch and build up what we have today. Mm -hmm. It was not there. It was commitment of the highest order. Yeah. It was patriotism, and for young people like ourselves, it was curiosity mm -hmm. and resilience. Yeah. We ran behind them. We listened to what they said. We wished and prayed that we would have opportunity to participate. And hence, when we were given opportunity to go to school, you took it. We took it. And we, very yeah. seriously, mm. and you ran mm. with it. Yeah. And we never faltered. You went to achieve. Mm. You did not look at what your colleague is doing. Your colleague did not influence your decision to get there. Yours was a desire for you also to get there. Yeah. Because if you looked back, who did you see in the schools? There were white girls from uh, Britain or from Australia or from France, some countries mm. leading your school. Uh, leading the schools, yeah. leading institutions in the church, and then we would say, hey, but these are women, and we are women, and they are girls, and we are girls, can we also get there? Mm -hmm. what, take, what does it take to get there? Yeah. Education, preparation, yeah. listening, so, and following. 
So, so Heshimiwa, I, I sorry to interject. Right on what you're talking about is actually where I was heading, because like I mentioned, uh, you know, you were the first of many, and now you're talking about being in a class where everybody else was, you know, was uh, was white, you know. So you are the first of many. You're the pioneer. Um, one one wonders what kind of upbringing did she have, especially in a time when the society was mostly patriarchal, though we were just fresh out of colonization. You know, you, were, you grew up in the time when people, there was still colonization. What kind of a bringing did you have that was able to propel you mm -hmm. to reaching these heights that you continue to reach year in, year out? Mm -hmm. Quite a few of us, you know, grew up from um, missionary families. Eh? Yes. And uh, like my father had been to, uh, to World War, the First World War. And then he came back and he became a teacher. And from teacher, he became a missionary. And so I was brought up from uh, that background yes. of Malimu mm. and uh, then a spiritual leader. And my mother was the same, those Ali Kutendereza group <laughs> 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 from Namirembe Cathedral in Kampala. Yes. She was on the, from the other side yes. of the border. Yeah. So they all met uh, on the platform of uh, religion. Yeah. Uh, but you know, with that background, and my father being a school teacher, and then he became also in respect of schools, and he became a reverend. Yes. So that background gave me a platform. I'm the sixth born in my family. Mm. So the other uh, five had gone through their, uh, their, their mentorship yes. upbringing, and all had gone to school, they all were teachers, and they, they are scientists. But what's more important is that, uh, you know, they had grown up together, and there were eight of us in the family. Mm. So we were like a little uh, <laughs> a village. group of uh, <laughs> miniature school <laughs> of our own. Yes, yes. Very few families were sending their children to school, mm -hmm. but my parents did. And there were six girls in my family. Wow. And those days, girls were not anything. Yeah. And you know, you stayed at home. But my father, who had six girls, you can imagine in his community, he was looked down upon. Mm -hmm. Because they said, you know, ah, what would a funny and in? Hana Vijana. Hana Vijana. Yeah. There were two boys and they were seen as nothing. Yeah. You are so, you are in the minority. Mm -hmm. For Baba, it was good. It was all right. We were all his children and he sent all of us to school. Mm -hmm. And for me now, seeing my elders, at school, I also struggled to follow in their footsteps. We went to our kindergarten, their kindergarten, and moved on. But even then, what was also important was the boys who were going to school. Mm -hmm. And in my community, the boys who went to school came back during the holidays, and they were brought together for classes. Yes. They, they, they had their holiday tuitions together. And for me, having an opportunity to be in this group of uh, a, a family that did not mind gender mixing, mm -hmm. they did not subscribe to some of the traditional, you know, taboos mm -hmm. that you know hindered girls from going forward. Yes, you know, I was able to move. Mm -hmm. I was curious. I wanted to see what the boys were doing in the yeah. classes. And I hear some of them were scientists, so I also said, I'll also be a scientist. And so I wanted to hear what the boys are doing there in secondary school. So I said, I also want to go to secondary school. And there was nothing like secondary school in our area. Mm -hmm. So we were prepared to walk. And my father said, if you want it, you just go and get it. I'm not standing in your way. Secondary school is not here, Alliance. Mm -hmm. And I'm in Samia Nibusia. Wow. <laughs> and there are no trains. There are no buses. So you see how you now plan yourself yes. as a little girl yeah. to get there. Yeah. So there was something in us which probably uh, cannot now be inculcated mm -hmm. in our generation, in your generation, mm -hmm. because you have everything mm -hmm. around. For us, it wasn't there. And I was prepared to say, I'll go to Alliance. I'll go to my career. I've had my 
uh, my brother say they are science, they are learning physics. Mm -hmm. We don't even have a laboratory. Okay. I'm going to go to um, secondary school. And there isn't even a secondary school in this year. Yeah. So I walked at the age of nine from my home in Busia to Butere for intermediate school, mm -hmm. uh, primary. Mm -hmm. Nine years old, being 70 kilometers to go to school. Yeah. And you get there and learn with the classes, sometimes of elders who are <laughs> two, three times your age, mm. but we scrambled on. So really there was the determination, the need to achieve, which is personal to yourself, I yes. think. It's personal. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter even if your parents are. Yeah. Yeah. So there was some, that. And then the community around us, even at that time, mm -hmm. nine year olds, we were helping from the missionaries' family, we were helping the villagers. We were like teachers. Yes. You went to teach other children at nursery school. Mm. Yes. So there was also that gap. Yeah. But what I want to say is that the women were ready. It was not only myself. It was not only in our family. Mm -hmm. My mother also taught the others around. And the others spread. And the women of Kenya were uh, ready to also move. Because the men had moved ahead. Mm. The women who you have read history. Yes. Were in freedom fight. Yes. Yes. They came out and we saw, I have made a reference to Mama Uhuru in the mm. streets here. Mm. When I was at a large girls high school. Uh, early teen age, we crossed, we, we used to cross on weekend and go to um, Kaloleni, mm. uh, Makongeni, and meet Mama Uhurus. Mm -hmm. And we'd sit under, just like you are saying today, yes. you want to hear from me? So we also listened to their story. <laughs> and they told us tales, yeah. horrifying tales. Yeah. So he said, but you know, we also want to be leaders like, Mzejo Makenyata and those yes. freedom fighters. Yes. You know, also women must be in the forefront. How do we get there? Mm -hmm. And just like you are aspiring, eh? we listen. What you are doing is exactly what we did. Wow. Different scale, but it's the same. Yeah. We also learned. Yeah. We were interested. That curiosity of wanting to know how Julia got there. Mm -hmm. We wanted to know how these women got in the forest and survived and came back. Yeah. They taught us those skills. Mm -hmm. How, how to get there. Mm -hmm. And then independence comes and the government comes and the women are not even there. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Actually, that's what I want us to touch And they on. have been in yeah. the forest also fighting. They've been in the forest that they have been fighting. And of course, you know, your role as a gender activist over the years, I don't know if my audience and maybe our viewers know, uh, is the reason why we have been able to enjoy some of the freedoms that we have today. You know, just give us a little bit uh, more of insight. You know, some of the milestones that you have been able to, uh, you know, achieve over the past. You know, now when you realize, hey, Apana, we have we fought in the forest, we've suffered, people have been killed, here we are. When you finally got into a position to be able to help women, you know, give us, give us your journey until, you know, in, in gender activism. Uh, my, uh, like I say, my curiosity started when I was in primary school yes. and I saw the, I wanted Indeed. to learn also to see the, what, to, to do what these white teachers, girls were doing mm -hmm. and how they got there. Mm -hmm. So we have come uh, a little. We talked about education, which is very important. Yes. Prepare ourselves. We prepare ourselves. You prepare yourself. Correct. And to be a leader, you have to be tough. Mm -hmm. You have learned to develop yourself spiritually. And I'm glad we started off with the word prayer. Yes, always. You know? yeah. It sets you. And that's why my upbringing set me and therefore set my goals so you set your goal what is it you want in life mm -hmm. and therefore you know from school i joined when we were, uh, i joined the mind layer when i was at school i was in the girl guides when i was at school i was at the joint ambulance when i was at school mm -hmm. i was in red cross when i was at school and all these things teach you skills yes. be prepared you know what to do. You have your little torch. Run up the hill. Climb the tree. 
if there's a, <laughs> a, a, a wild dog down here yes. barking, <laughs> you got to look for safety because you do now, you are tycoon also mm. as well as, as well. But we learned those skills. Yes. So you have to be prepared to be resilient, to be obedient. It's very important to yourself and to your, those who tutor you. To be faithful to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To respect yourself. I think that was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many things that would also distract you from yes. the thing. So you be truthful to yourself. Respect yourself. Be ready to learn. Follow what you see that has taken somebody forward. Mm -hmm. If you choose to move, then you move forward with your goal to achieve. If you listen to what others say because you want to do what they are doing, then you will not achieve your yes. goal. Because how they got there, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then you never learn their tactics. Mm -hmm. Focus on yourself. Can I develop my own skills also to look like they are? And I think that's what we did. Yeah. So uh, from school, I was able to join the Royal Technical College mm -hmm. because I wanted to be a scientist. My colleagues were going to Makerere yes. to do teaching, to become a, uh, teachers because that was the most open and in you know, a profession. And there were nurses. For me, I said I want technology because I've been told there's going to be a technical college. Mm -hmm. So I chose that one. But at that time, people say techn technical college, that you are a mechanic. You are what you are looking down upon okay. technology. <laughs> but now I listened yeah. because my cousin, Hilary Ngueno, mm -hmm. you heard about him. Yes. Yeah. He, he had gone to America. He had been the best student in uh, his time. Mm -hmm. And he was given the uh, um, a scholarship, go and learn technology at Massachusetts mm. Institute of Technology mm. at Harvard yeah. in, in America. So I looked at him, my cousin, how does he, and he won it on merit. Yeah. I said, how does he get, and you know, the ones who have been teaching me mathematics, and you know, now they leave me here. Yeah. I also want to do what he does. So I followed in the footsteps. You choose what you want from where you think you can get it from a mentorship that can lead you there. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. yeah, because at that time I would not have known about it until I heard that he had gone to, my, to Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And then I had this technical college coming up in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and that's going to lead me here. That's how I learned it, being the first woman. The first female <laughs> student yeah, in the Royal Technical and College. And it was good, it opened opportunity for yes. me. I went on. I went to London thereafter. I went to Harvard. I went to McGill. Came back to Nairobi. I was prepared. Mm -hmm. In between, there are so many things that we were doing. Yeah. I cannot narrate them all. As women, we were also gathering momentum. Yeah. We also wanted the Kenya we want. We heard about that story. Mm -hmm. oh, we were at uh, Limuru and the Kenya we want. And we were secretaries because now we were prepared to be the secretaries mm. with our skills to read and write and English. We sat in those conferences and took notes for our women groups, for my entire one one. We were able to interpret and keep records for them. So the Kenya, we want records we have. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the in, uh, election, oh my entire one one chair, the first chair yes. did. We were there. We, we cast the vote. We prepared the stage. We said we want our leadership. Among us, who can we choose to be our leader? Mm -hmm. A teacher, Malim Phoebe. Because we were not teachers ourselves, we are still young like yourselves. Yeah. She was already trained a teacher. We said that one, she's the one who can take it from the mm -hmm. Mzungu and, and run with it for us. Mm -hmm. So we gathered behind, we propelled her forward, we gave her a vote, we supported her to mm -hmm. be. And they were yeah. We picked the skills of our uh, freedom fighters. We also now said then, what next? They have gone to Lancaster. And they have come back. Independence, 60 years have taken place. We are not in the government. How do we prepare ourselves? Those skills we must also now do, uh, go for elective positions. Mm -hmm. 
So we desired to be elected. Yes. And it was not easy. It was not like what it is today. Mm -hmm. Because nobody was relenting. The women must stay at home. The women must do, so, must do something different. Mm -hmm. Men only in the front. Few had gone ahead of us. Like Grace Onyango, you heard about her? Yes. Uh, may her, she rest in peace. She left us last year, mm -hmm. early this year. Yes, to uh, this year. Yeah. But she had won um, a seat in Kisumu as a mayor. Now she was first member of parliament, woman in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I was at Harvard when she became the first member of parliament. So I said to myself, if I have gone to Harvard with this education, eh? Grace didn't have it, but you know, she has fought those men, and it was not an easy struggle for her. And she's in parliament, when I go back, I'll also try. With all these skills, why not? Mm -hmm. Because I'm prepared, I've gone through it, I walked those miles, I've seen my colleagues build themselves from some of those experiences that I'm going through, which is what you are going through yourselves today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You are seeing uh, our women in Air Force, you are seeing our women at parade, majors, uh, engineers, doctors, and you now choose your trade. Where am I? Where is the gap? Where am I needed most? Mm -hmm. Although I was back I was a lecturer, I mm -hmm. was a senior lecturer, but there was a need to see my colleagues, women, in the front line. Yes. So I joined Grace Onyango. I fought for a seat that was very hot because I took it from a person who was very well established in the government, a trade unionist, a freedom fighter. And I'm a little girl like yourselves. <laughs> in fact, I was younger I'm than sure yourselves. I'm sure they were wondering what is happening with this one. What is the what plans that she has? I was younger than yourselves. Yeah. He's a minister, and I'm just like you with nothing. I had a little car, 1100 Datsun. <laughs> Capacitor 1100. That's all I had. But I was able with my articulate skills. I was able with my interest, I was able with the community <laughs> uh, experience to mobilize, to mobilize my youth groups, my women groups, to listen to the luga of development. Mm -hmm. What is it that's going to improve your life? What is it that's going to improve the families? What is it that is going to cause us to take more children to school? And there are only a few girls in school, and here I have got all this PhD, and you look back, there are no other PhDs. Mm -hmm. So I went. It was not easy to choose. But again, trust your mm -hmm. family and your relatives. Okay. So they gave me support, mm -hmm. and I went. When I came back, I was appointed an assistant minister for the first time. For the first time, and nobody would believe it. <laughs> I think I think that's, that's yeah. I think that's a good place for us to take a short break, and then uh, we'll come back, and Professor will continue giving us, you know, the play by play about the role that she has played, uh, especially in promoting women in this country as we celebrate Kenya at sixty. Don't go far away.
Welcome back. So uh, we have come to my favorite part of the show, which uh, gives our, us an opportunity to interact. So this is where my audience will get an opportunity to interact with the panel if they have questions, comments on uh, in regards to the conversation for today. Remember, we are celebrating Kenya at 60 and we are getting a first hand account of how it's been. Of course, we cannot be able to summarize everything <laughs> within the hour that we've been given. But so far, what we have gotten has been inspired inspirational everything has been so inspirational by a true living legend uh, professor julia ojambo so to start us off during the question and uh, answer session i'll start off uh, with madam lillian thank you so much professor it's a pleasure having you here uh, we celebrate you together with kenya at 60 and uh, it's so happy and it's so and inspiring having you here my question is as young women we are we are uh, aspiring to be to reach where you are even if not reaching where you are but be at the top and now that we have the opportunity how do we get under the table from where we are to the top of the table where we can make decisions together with the others you can be anything up there yeah. today you are a cabinet minister and you see them and i lifted that top when i joined the royal technical college and i said women must join universities yes and today you see the universities there are more than 67 70 universities in kenya and mm -hmm. women are all over yeah we've lifted that uh table top when we went to classrooms and said all parents please bring out the girl child mm -hmm. to school and from poco to drama i don't know where everywhere else in kenya and the girl child is at par with uh, our boy child. Yes. So today you have everything. And the constitution for which we have fought until 2010, it's here, uh, with a beautiful chapter that it gives all of us the right to be who we are, where we want to be in Kenya today. Mm. So there's no youth. When I went to parliament, I said I was younger than yourselves. And those are the days when children have, had no voice. Yes. Today, children from the age of nine, you see them on the stage. So you are not young. You are the leaders of Kenya today. You are there. All you do for yourself is carve a position. Mm -hmm. You cannot be an MCA for all the 3,000 MCA positions in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You can only be a position in your own constituency, mm -hmm. in your own ward. Yeah. So work with your ward. Endear yourself to the ward. Mm -hmm. Let people know you in the ward, they'll give you the vote. From there, then you can look for a constituency. Mm -hmm. Then it is your member of parliament area. Work with the people in that area. You become known to them. They'll vote you up and you move on. Mm -hmm. You become a governor. You become, you can be a deputy president today. You can be a president. We are waiting for that moment. Yes. For Eager. out of your group, yeah. for one Kenyan woman to become a president. Yeah. But it requires planning. It requires development. It's not just I wish I want to be a president. Mm -hmm. It's not just because the one who is there is bad. I want to bring them down and be there. Yes. Prepare. Does, what does it mean to be in charge of a nation? It's not bread and butter. It's not a walk in the in the park, as they say, mm -hmm. it means a lot of inside yourself, self-sacrifice, self-research to understand what it is. And you have to be solid inside you. Mm -hmm. To add to that, your determination. And it's just because others are getting in there. You may run and not be a Kipchoge, mm -hmm. Eliud. Oh, wow. Yeah, and accept if you are not there. Yeah. You may get there and you are not able to lead for whatever reason. But whoever gets there, I think, needs the support. And so when you are at world level, you are a leader. Yes. When you are a member of parliament, you are a leader. When you are a governor, and you can only have one leader at a time. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of um, reference, as it were. Not that we washed our leadership, but we gave them respect. Once a leader is elected, give the leader support. Your time is going to come. Your time then is learn to come. from their mistakes and yeah. see how you can um, uh, improve on them. Don't say your mistake must bring you down. No, no. 
your mistake you learn from them mm. and so for me i faltered i have failed several times but falling does not make me a failure I learn from the strength of falling wow. and you wake up and move. And you move, wow. Yeah. That is definitely pearls of wisdom. I feel like she deserves a round of applause for that. <laughs> I mean, that is truly inspirational. When, when you started, she said there's nothing like under the table. And like I said, she has, a, you know, uh, Professor has a very, very impressively curated milestones. She's done so many of those things. And she said, because of my effort, that, that, that gives you the path. So you follow through, you work hard. And I think there's a few things that I can absolutely pick out from she's watching. You know, respecting whoever is in power. We cannot all be in power. You know, endearing yourself to the people. And I think it, uh, it cuts across even all industries. It's not just even in politics. I think the powers of wisdom that you have given us, Mheshimi, were cut across even in life, yeah. even in career, even in industry, even in family. You know, some very key uh, powers of wisdom there from Professor. So we are going to move. Thank you so, so much. Uh, we are going to move to our second uh, question or comment of, of the show. Uh, you know, it's coming from uh, Mama, Mama Chapo. <laughs> She'll tell us why she's called Mama Chapo. Thank you so much, Shiko. This one goes to our professor, Dr. Julia. Now, I'm so happy for the last answer you've answered, my friend, here, that, you know, so many women out here, they're dying out of depression because they've failed. But that was not my question. My question is, what makes you look so young? <laughs> you just focused. Your mind is very sober. Your eyesight is good. You can see my friend is wearing glasses. But you're so <laughs> <laughs> because she's old. She's not <laughs> but you, you look so young. I would like to be like you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very oh, much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. When we went to school, we were the first women to go to school. Mm. And we, we know we had to teach others to also go to school, isn't it, like we said? Yes. And so you become a model, a role model, yes. right from the word go. And to be a role model, you must always lead from Example. a point of strength, mm. a point of knowledge, a point of, ex you know, uh, <coughs> an, an admirable, replicable example. Yes. So you put yourself into that position. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to do? You have to be strong yourself. You have to, therefore, build yourself to be strong. Nobody's going to build you to be strong. Mm -hmm. What you eat is what you are. Wow. So keep yourself in good physical health. God has been very kind to me. I've never gone to hospital, mm -hmm. except when I've gone to a ward to deliver and for less than half a day, and I've been out. Wow. And I went back to work. Because during our days, we didn't have maternity. Yeah? And you did not, if you showed you are expecting, you'll be sacked. Oh dear. Leave alone when you went to the world to deliver, you'll be sacked. So, you know, we had to learn to carry nine months at work, deliver over the weekend, and be back to work the following Monday oh in office. So, we kept ourselves strong, we kept ourselves in good health, we kept ourselves in mental, a good mental health. Yeah. It's not easy to count all these things, but by God's grace, one gets there. And I believe that it's possible for women to keep themselves fit, for men to keep themselves fit. But there are times when people give up. Mm -hmm. And again, this is where our inner strength helps one to live. Mm -hmm. I think I saw my mother and father struggle through very hard times to bring me up. Mm -hmm. And my, my mother never gave up. Even if she didn't have breast milk to feed my siblings, I saw her, how she struggled to make that porridge work for my uh, younger siblings. Mm -hmm. And that encouraged me. So uh, who I am is what really I make myself. Mm -hmm. And food is the building stones. That's mm -hmm. all that we are. Mm -hmm. So watch carefully what the, your doctor recommends for you. Uh, don't give too much. Uh, attendance to what <laughs> Google stories what tell Google, you. <laughs> what Google is like. <laughs> what Google, Google is like. You. <laughs> what market is telling you. Yes. No, I think listen carefully to what your doctor is telling you yes. and how your body behaves. Yeah. If you feel you are tired, rest. Mm -hmm. But as I've said, it's also mental setup. If you think you are old, you are old. Oh, wow. 
I love For that. me, when I'm with you, I really feel I'm you. Yeah. I want to feel I'm your age, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to stay here and be with you, so I listen to you. <laughs> now, to be able to listen to you without you rejecting me, yeah. I have to look like yourselves, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And it's possible to keep yourself amongst your teams. Yes. I grew up as a young person. I didn't grow up as an old person. You say we and are then, tired, you know, then you'll be, be consistent. Tired. Yeah. I've kept my hairstyle like that since I was, I, I think since I went to the Royal Technical yes. College, even between my photographs, yes. I've also. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, come it, don't take it to the hairdressers who steal it off you. <laughs> <laughs> Do it yourself. <laughs> I look after my hair myself. Yes. I don't oh, wow. go for so many chemicals. I don't put chemicals there. Yes. Yes. We, we, we'll definitely have to do a, a short video and, and we hope that uh, <laughs> Professor is going to invite us to show, to show how she does her hair yeah. because I think it is so iconic for the, someone to sit and say, I'm here in a Kwanga wig. <laughs> Two no, minutes. No, 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 no. I am here to attest <laughs> to you, my viewers at home, <laughs> that it is definitely her hair. So let's move on to our next question or comment. Uh, yeah, and uh, wow, I, I hope everybody is having as much time as I, you know, enjoying this time as much as I am. So our next question and uh, a comment from uh, Ms. Abdallah. Okay, my name is Botul Abdallah. I'm from Kibra. I'm a Nubian, a minority. And uh, it's pleasure meeting you today. And uh, one thing I've learned from you is a word, prepare. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I'm already prepared. <laughs> yeah, and my question is um, the role of women in development from of, um, from the past fifty years. Mm. Yeah, okay. just want to know the role of the women uh, in development now from the past fifty years. The, that question is very fundamental and very important. <coughs> development and what our role is is really what we should be talking about and thinking about. What is our contribution. We've talked quickly over the past history, 60 years. Very many people have contributed to being where we are today. Mm -hmm. And they have suffered. Some of them have triumphed. So there's happiness, there's pain in getting there. Development is made up of that mixed bag of happiness, of success, of failures, but determination to produce. It is, you know, it indicates in itself, uh, you know, uh, the spirit of growth. So all of us have got a space in it. It's not only for women. It's for all of us. The time when we talked about gender segregation is gone. We went to Mexico, we went to Copenhagen, we went to uh, Beijing, we went to New York severally. That we have discarded is over. Mm -hmm. So we are all at par. And today, the Kenyan uh, societies even decrying the women now being ahead, girl child being ahead of boy child, mm -hmm. isn't it? So who is who? All of us, you have today, the girl child is behind. Tomorrow, the, girl, the boy child needs the same, is behind. All of us are suffering from that segregation, if ever it was. Mm -hmm. But the Constitution has given us, as I've said, equal opportunity to contribute. So development means the area in this space in which we live, mm -hmm. making it good, making it uh, progressive for us, making it useful for us and, the, and our generations to come. All of us must aspire, aspire, be desirous of adding, making it a little better than you found it. Mm -hmm. To live in it, to be happy in it, you must contribute to it. And that's all we are doing. The, that's the blueprint of development. That's, that's the, the way it is. It. Yes. And we have to be prepared and to do that. And we have to be prepared for it. So that is development. Yes. I want to wish you good development yes. spirit. I, I, I like that. And I think we'll start wishing people in 2024, we'll start wishing people, I wish you good development, <laughs> you know? And, and I but like don't that I wait until yeah. you are a, uh, an MCA. Yes. Yeah. Don't wait until you are an MP. Don't yeah. wait until you are a governor. Mm. Wherever you are, you are a governor yes. of your life. Mm. You are the president of your life. Yes. You are the president of your family. 
So don't wait until I'm a president. The Nubian group in, 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 in Kibera yeah. uh, will, will not have. Yeah. They have. They have everything. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Leadership will come from each one of you, just like it is. Lead of <laughs> Manyumbakumi yeah. amongst you. At a time appointed, yes. and when it comes, use it that way. Wow. Yeah. I, think, I think those are very encouraging words. You know, even everybody who's watching at home, and I loved how, uh, you know, Meheshimiwa put it, development is, is, you know, is the area that you're in. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, if your little space is okay, then of course it can obviously multiply. Once you're done with your house, and I think that's definitely the role of women in development. Yeah. You know, it's not always, you know, fight to go and get the corner office. How is, how is your home looking? How is your street looking? How is your village looking? And growing from there, because all of these are facets that we are, you know, we are concerned about and we are in charge of as women. So we will move to the final uh, question or comment of the day. And this is from a friend of Dada's show. And we are so happy that you joined us today, Sue. And uh, yes, please kindly share with us. Uh, Mashimia, I'm really honored to be in your presence. And uh, I'm slightly mature to these young ladies here. <laughs> and the area which I'd love to hear from you is after politics, what next? How is, are you in retirement and how is retirement for you? How do you continue contributing to society or the people around you after what you've been through? What, mm. you know, what are you doing now? Because mm. you're still a leader, we still respect you. And uh, I think it's something that you, you goes along with you. Thank you. Thank you for that question. It's very interesting. <laughs> People think that when you've been in politics, then it's uh, the end of it. And that politics itself is a, an end to your life. Mm -hmm. Politics is not. It, and every one of us is a leader. And that's what really it means. It's just a name, politics, but what does it, when you break it down, what does it mean? It's, you use the same words for development. Mm. That's what we are doing. But that person who probably has got more an, uh, opportunity to stand in front there and lead you in your team is a politician. That's what we, we really uh, think that is happening. Yeah. Then all of us in that group are politicians. Mm -hmm. He cannot be a politician and lead alone. And you will never be a politician alone. You are leading a team then that's why you are being called a politician there. You are speaking for them. You are moving that group mm -hmm. ahead. You got more skills, you got more, little more wisdom, you got more ideas, and you, you, you like them. Yes. For me, uh, politics had never been in my life. Yeah. And it's, it, yeah, don't, I didn't choose politics because it's got that connotation of political. Mm -hmm. I went there because I want to be a leader of my team. And I went there not because I want to be a leader, but I've got something to contribute to my team. Mm -hmm. I went there because I wanted my, my community to get water to their families. Mm -hmm. I went there because children and women of, um, of a childbearing age were malnourished. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see how I can improve their health. So I went there and started the milk goat scheme, you see. This yes. uh, milk goat. Mm -hmm. Goat, what all? Got milk. Yes, a good milk. Yeah. Got milk. Mm -hmm. It's a scheme I started. Yes. I wanted an animal that could give milk to the babies, to the children, that mother could easily on her own mm -hmm. milk, that kid could milk at home. And that propelled me to the front. Yes. I went to give uh, relief to malnutrition. I went to bring water at home. I wanted to, I wanted to increase uh, agricultural production yes. in my area. Yes. I wanted to see clean homes. I went to help mamas learn how to do that. Mm. I wanted to see health children. I went to teach them because I had those skills and the others didn't have. Mm. That gave me quickly the name politics. But when I retreated from politics in 1983, yes. that's when I left active politics, 1983. Yes. I didn't cease to be a leader, like you have said. I, was, uh, I had learned skills of speaking from the front. Yes. So I remained guiding 
in a political sphere. Yeah. And I continue to mentor. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, luckily enough, I started my Labour Party of Kenya, mm. which, which I've used as, a, as, a, as an incubator mm. for young people like I mentor you and I lead, leave you to go and join your own party. Mm. We, a lot of political uh, leaderships you see around have gone through some of those uh, little opportunities that you create for yes. civic education, mm. for uh, political leadership skills that we train young people to go through. Mm -hmm. But then I had my own uh, um, center of interest. I liked working with vulnerable people, mm. children, elders, since a child, because I grew up in a community of a church and my mother took care of the... Yes, now uh, I've been part of the mission. Over the list, yes. uh, uh, fortunate. Mm. So I've lived to serve people with disability ever mm. since. So when I was made an assistant minister, the first portfolio uh, Mzee Joma Kenyatta also gave me was look after the vulnerable. Mm. So I started taking care of the rehabilitation yes. centers from that early in government. And you know, I want us to listen also to our women in, polit and in the government. Yeah. We talk a lot of our women in politics and you forget that we are getting there because of the women that are in government. Mm. They are the ones who change policies. We can talk a lot outside here, but we cannot change the policy mm, of a government yes. to favor the family, to favor the children, and to favor the women. Mm. So when I was there, that's one area that was of interest to me. I worked with the policies that touched on the youth, policies that touched on women, told policies that, that how I got us to go to Mexico, to uh, Copenhagen, yeah. to Beijing, to where we are today. What are you, what are you currently, briefly, what are you currently w working on right now? Are you continuing with what you've always done or there's uh, maybe a new project you have? But it's always good to work with what you know best. Yes, absolutely. And I've work, I'm still working with what I knew best. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher from childhood. I've been a teacher up to today. I yes. still teach. Uh, I'm a spokesperson. So that is what brought me into politics. Yes. I was meant to be a <laughs> spokesperson of people. Yes. I'm a leader in yeah. that area. Yeah. I'm a health scientist because, as I've told you, I started off with an interest in improving the welfare of the of your people, of my people. Yes. So I like working with the uh, health issues. Mm -hmm. I'm still on that one, yeah. and where I'm required. I do that. Mm. So today <laughs> I'm working for the National Fund for Disabled of Kenya, yeah. which we started in uh, 1980 mm -hmm. when we were doing the International Year for International Year, UN Year for People with Disability, mm -hmm. and President Moy helped us do Harambe and set up that fund. Yeah. I'm a trustee there. For oh. the last 43 years, yes. I'm on a perpetual. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we are appointed for life, so I'm on that one. I'm yeah. academician, yes. and I'm an academician, yes. and that's my teaching profession. Oh. I'm still with the University of Nairobi. Yeah. <laughs> ask me anywhere. If you ask me, I'll come. I yeah. mentor you. I was uh, 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 lastly, two years ago, chair of the council of the University of Nairobi. I'm now a trustee of the University of Nairobi Foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm still with my colleagues. Oh, that's, in, that's in excellent. And, so and those two are still yeah. keeping me. I'm still with my political party. I still mentor. Oh, wow. Well. If you want me to mentor you to politics, I, I can tell you, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Meshimiwa, you know, and I think I can sit and I can listen to you the whole, the whole <laughs> afternoon. And I think that's, that, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> wow.
I, I think we now understand what it means by truly inspirational. Truly, this is a com this is a mentor, and I'm hoping that everybody has been able to get you know uh, uh, pearls of wisdom and things that they can be able to carry not only in their political career but in their lives in general, in their personal lives, in their professional life. Uh, moving on, so of course we have come to the end of a very insightful, informative show, and uh, you know uh, we have learned so so much. And I am hoping even you at home have been able to take away, you know, piles of wisdom as we sit down and as we celebrate, as we look back on the 60 years, you know, the, we may, for the amount of time that you have been alive, it is good to hear the progress that has been made. So let's keep at it. Let us push forward as a nation and let us appreciate and learn from those who have gone before us and ho those who have paved the way for us. So on behalf of the production team uh, at KBC, uh, our location partner, Best Western, of course, Professor Julia Ojiambo, my wonderful audience, and myself, Ashiko Mbune, I wish you all a lovely week, and we will catch you same time, same place uh, on Dada's show. Till then, bye-bye.